Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good day to everyone. For this week, we will be discussing on chapter 10 on the characteristics, processing and applications of polymers. We have now come to the third part of the chapter that is dedicated to some of the major polymer processing that we're going to discuss in short. Now, we have come to the third part of the polymer discussion, whereby we should now discuss on the processing aspect of polymers. The first type of polymers are the thermoplastic, and before we can relate to the processing, we must first understand and recall the characteristics of this material. As we know, thermoplastic can be reversibly cooled and reheated, therefore they can be recycled and they will heat until soft and we can shape them as desired and cool them. Examples include polyethylene, polypropylene and polystyrene. For the thermoset materials, when heated, they form a molecular network through chemical reaction and the grades, they don't melt when heated and a pre-polymer molded into desired shape and then chemical reaction occurs. Examples are urethane and epoxy. First type of processing method for the two types of material, which is thermoplastic and thermosets, is called the compression molding. As you can see on the illustration given down here, we have a mold. You have to design your mold properly. For the cavity, it depends on the end product or what you wish to produce from this process. We have both the heating and cooling elements. And we have this platen up and bottom. We also have the guide pin and the molding compound, the material that we are processing through this process. So here, polymer and additives or the preform are placed in the mold cavity. The mold is then heated and pressures applied, and the fluid polymer will assume the shape of the mold. Next common process is the injection molding, whereby for the thermoplastic and some thermoset materials, an example of illustration of this machine is given here. We can also see the mold cavity, whereby the mold needs to be properly designed. We have a feed hopper where we can feed the pellets, the raw materials. There is a ram with this hydraulic pressure acting through it. We have the nozzle in the heating chamber, and this is the barrel, and this is where the spreader is pushing the raw materials through the nozzle into the mold cavity. So basically, when ram retracts, the pallet, the plastic pallet will drop from the hopper into the barrel, and the ram will force the plastic into the heating chamber around the spreader where the plastic melts as it moves forward and the molten plastic will be forced under pressure and it will be injected into the mold cavity where it assumes the shape of the mold. So for both compression and injection molding, it is very very crucial to properly design the mold and the mold cavity to the product that we desire. Now, let's look at one sample problem relating to this Discussion. Car front grills made of acrylonitrile butadiene styrene or AVS polymer are going to be best produced using injection molding process as given in figure 10.5. So, illustrate with labels the injection molding process. So, in order for you to answer the question, you can use a similar diagram as shown in the slide previously. And if it's a final exam, you should also discuss in some point forms on how this ABS polymer can be produced using the injection molding process. So you can refer to the e-textbook and other sources to find information relating the process. Next process is the extrusion, extrude. This is especially for thermoplastic materials. As you can see in the illustration here, there are several different configuration or geometries of products that can be extruded from this extrusion machine. 
it is in general look it looks a little bit like the injection molding machine except that at the end here where there is this die instead of the mold cavity we can have different types of die for the shaping die and with different configuration of the die when we extrude it we can have different end products from tubing and pipes to sheet and films and structural parts so in short forms through extrusion process the plastic pellets drop from the hopper onto the turning screw and the plastic pellets will melt as the turning screw pushes them forward through the heaters and the molten polymer is forced under pressure to the shaping die to form the final product or the extrudate. So another sample problem is given on aspect of examples of product from extrusion. Can you find information relating to this? If you look at this image here, it gives you some ideas of what type of products can be produced from extrusion. And would you be able to list some of the advantages and limitation of extrusion compared to the other process? For this kind of question, you may need to do further reading. You can refer to the ebook chapter from the Calista textbook or you can also find sources available online. Now, the other type of polymer processing is called the blown film extrusion. So by knowing blown film extrusion is like combining the extrusion process with an attachment whereby we can produce bags, films and sheets out of the process. So this information on the explanation to blown film is extracted from the Callister textbooks whereby the film may be blown and the continuous tubing is extruded through an annular die and then while we maintain a carefully controlled positive gas pressure inside the tube and by drawing the film in the actual direction as it goes from the die the material will expand around the trap air bubble like a balloon as shown on this figure Consequently, the wall thickness is continuously reduced to produce a thin cylindrical film that can be sealed at the end. This is to produce the garbage bags or they can be cut and laid flat to make a film. It is system by actual drawing process and produces films that are strong in both stretching directions. So on this sample problem, we are discussing on possible questions relating to blown film or blown molding process. Question like what is the shape of product suitable to be produced by blown molding? And the answer is hollow products definitely like the plastic water bottles. So what is the advantage and limitations of blown molding process? In order for you to answer this kind of question, you may have to summarize all the different processes and look at the advantages and limitation of each. So the given here is one example of answer to the question. Other polymer processes also include thermoforming, calendaring and spinning. The first one is thermoforming. As you can see from the simple illustration here, it involves heating element and in thermoplastic in this process, the plastic polymer sheets are heated to the plastic region and can be formed over a dye to produce such diverse products like the egg cartons and decorative panels. And the forming can be done using matching dyes, a vacuum or air pressure. So in this illustration, we can see the presence of vacuum and the use of plastic film. For calendaring, in calendar, a molten plastic is poured into a set of rolls with small opening. The rolls, which may be embossed with a pattern, squeeze out a thin sheet of polymer, which is often a polyvinyl chloride. And typical products include vinyl floor tile and shower curtains. For spinning process, filaments, fibers and yarns may be produced by the spinning process. The molten thermoplastic polymer 
is forced through a die which contains many tiny holes. The die, called a spinneret, can rotate and produce a yarn. And for some materials like nylon, the fiber may consequently be stretched to align the chain parallels to the axis of the fiber, and this process increases the strength of the fibers.